thought I'd sort of carry on um, uh, some discussion really about 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 480 uh, progressive uh, signals um, uh, out of consoles and really feeding them into a CRT to get the best out of out of that that kind of output in my opinion um, I thought I'd venture into the PlayStation 2 side I'm sure many of you are aware that uh, the PlayStation 2 um, was predominantly a, a console that output a, a 480i signal, which I'm sure many of you are aware also that, 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 that an interlaced uh, signal doesn't give the sort of best kind of um, um, a, a sort of experience in uh, in a number of ways you get the flicker and and you know it, even though you get that that sort of fake what they call fake high res um uh, you do tend to get quite a bit of flicker on on a normal crt tv you know 15 kilohertz now the playstation 2 could actually output a progressive signal as well uh, 480p and and there's a few games that are actually compatible with that kind of video uh, signal output. Now that has to be uh, utilised via a, a a component lead setup. So you've got to have a component lead setup to get to get progressive signal out of out of a PlayStation 2. Um, I think there are solutions to work with VGA outputs as well, but uh, but for the purpose of this video, we'll just uh, concentrate on on a progressive output. Now. Sort of due to the development, really, of the of the PlayStation 2 scene itself, there are various hacks, mods, and so forth that you can do to the PlayStation 2. Not only around the hardware side, but also around the software um, uh, side. Uh, like I said, there is a there is a a finite amount of of games of PlayStation 2 games that will output anyway in progressive mode, um, uh, but they've got to be NTSC based software. There's nothing power wise that will output a progressive um, uh, image uh, because 480p as a video signal was not something that was used in power regions in all honesty um, and not until more recent times so uh, there is a way to get round um, uh, the fact that uh, that if a game uh, exists that isn't isn't natively able to output into 480p you can actually force some games into 480p now that i suppose the whole the whole uh, discussion point of 480p when should you use it when shouldn't you use it when is it applicable when is it not applicable is quite i i get quite anal about about it to be honest if the if the original game itself say it's a port from an arcade uh, game just for instance just to make it a bit simple uh, to understand if the original game was in a 480p mode then i would prefer for the emulated um, uh, version of that game uh, via playstation 2 to also mimic the original um, uh, output video signal so I suppose what I'm saying is is that what you don't really want to do, and I know a number of people do do this, but I, I'm, I'm not sort of really into this. I'm not into forcing a progressive signal for the sake of it. Um, let's think of, I don't know, I can't think of a... Actually, yeah, I, I, um, I was rooting through, through my, my um, uh, library of stuff the other day, and, and there was something that I found I didn't... I, I completely forgot I had it, and it actually wasn't with the bulk of my games, bulk of my PlayStation 2 games, it was elsewhere. And it is the uh, 10th anniversary edition uh, release of uh, Virtual Fighter that came out for the PlayStation 2. It was a, it was a Japanese only doobry, um, and it was a freebie. Uh, so there's limited numbers of the copies that were uh, made available. Um, uh, but I just found it. I thought, oh, <laughs> you know, I completely forgot about that. Now, now that game I could probably try and force into a progressive mode output. It doesn't natively do it uh, as regards to the software. And and if you display that on on a PlayStation, it will be in in interlace mode. Now the original arcade version of that um, uh, game was in I think it was in 24 kilohertz. Um, 
so it was slightly higher res than, than a normal 15 kilohertz gain. Now to me that won't look right, to me that won't look right if I try to force that because actually the original game wasn't meant to be in that video format. So, so for me it's about uh, sort of picking the right game. Now obviously in the PlayStation 2 cycle of, of, of releases um, and the actual console itself was was sold really as a as a as a 3d type uh, console as regards to the games that came out and of course a lot of games that came out in the PlayStation 2 were of that of that type of of, um, of game really you know there were 3d based games so a lot of the software on the PlayStation 2 should have really have been in progressive mode to get a better uh, definition of graphics in effect. You know, interlaced is okay, interlaced is absolutely fine, but it does tend to muddy the picture. And there's other issues as well with PlayStation 2 software and some of it has, has additional filter on, filtering on, which makes it look slightly muddy and so forth. But, you know, that's by the by. Uh, one of the games specifically that that greatly benefits from a progressive output even though it's the not native as regards to the software uh, you can't switch it to progressive uh, within the game itself is Gradius 5. Uh, Gradius 5 is an absolutely fantastic shoot em up it really is it, it it's sort of touted as perhaps the best um, a Gradius in the series. It's got some fantastic graphics in it, great gameplay, awesome bosses. I mean, it, it, it is an absolute great shoot em up. Uh, there is a way of, of uh, actually forcing some games. It doesn't work with every single game, but it gives you more flexibility, basically. And there's a utility that is called GSM Selector, which is a bit of software that works with PlayStation 2 and it enables you to uh, uh, change the video output actually with the version that's available at the moment all the way up to 1080p which is pretty fantastic actually and that doesn't work with every single game of the games that do work in normal 480p progressive mode through this uh, software so it's a bit of it's a bit of playing around to see what games uh, work with certain modes and actually which games work best with certain modes. It's not just about, you know, will it work with it? It's about actually uh, how does it look as well uh, and when it does work with it. So GSM Selector. Uh, I'm not going to go into a, a, a massive amount of detail about it. Just put it in Google, uh, guys. There's a, a load of stuff about it all over the internet. It is really, really easy to work with. Um, uh, you do need a, a hacked or a modded PlayStation 2 to be able to use uh, this utility, whether or not it's got a mod chip in there or whether or not you use um, a, an alternate uh, boot method off, off uh, something like an action replay or, or a, a memory stick or whatever. But again, there's lots of information about that, guys. Um, uh, on the internet to find out how to do that. I find this stuff really interesting just for uh, playing with things like this. Uh, not about uh, playing copied games, but about all the extra functionality you can get on, on some of the hardware by utilizing these, these sort of boot methods and so forth to run unassigned code. So I downloaded GSM Select. It's the first time I've done it. I've not really played with it, to be honest, but I, I, uh, I downloaded the utility. I converted it into into a disc uh, format, uh, ISO. Uh, wrote it to a blank CD, and I'm able to read that now on my on my on my PlayStation 2 because PlayStation 2 has been hacked. Um, and I've tried it successfully with Gradius 5, and it it really does make a massive difference. Uh, in the same vein really as my previous video about the GameCube and, and looking at progressive output on that and what I will do I will switch to some gameplay I'll show you what it looks like. I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to do it on the on the monitor that you can see behind me or whether I'll, I'll actually hook this up to my, my Naomi cab 
because that will tame a PlayStation 2 if you've seen on some previous videos I've got all the pad hacks and so forth and because that's a tri-sync monitor I can actually feed that 15, 24 and 31 kilohertz uh, uh, 31 kilohertz being a 480p signal so I might hook it up through that and show that on a video and certainly with certain games Gradius 5 is one of them um, and because of the nature of the game the way it's been developed the sort of high res graphics anyway it was meant for a high res high, high res high res graphics output so it it looks really really sweet in this mode and like i said it's a great game so i'll cut some video guys um of some gameplay of that game and let you see it in all its uh, 480p glory hope you enjoyed the video guys speak to you again soon Sorry.